Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a beautiful card featuring a color palette that was really inspired by the color palette that I was using throughout the Christmas season that included Ballet Slipper and Coral Reef. But what I've done is changed up the greens just a little bit to make this color palette a little more springy. So in the Christmas season, I was kind of using the evergreen with these pinks, but I thought it would be fun to take this color palette and freshen it up using the Tidal Pond and the Aquamarine, which by the way, Aquamarine is my birthstone. <laughs> I'm a March baby. So I'm going to do a little bit of stripping here, <laughs> paper stripping that is, and I'm going to use the Slim Stripes die from Pink Fresh Studio. This is the one that cuts the medium sized strips, and I'm going to run it through my Gemini Junior using just some plain white cardstocks. We're going to use the inks to add color to these cardstocks, and this is a great way to get a little more mileage out of your white cardstock and not have a ton of different colors card stocks on hand. Now I'm going to be using the full size ink pads for this today, but this technique is also great to use with your Pink Fresh ink cubes. So if you have that size or you prefer an ink cube over a full size ink pad, you can definitely do that as well. Now I'm running this through my die cut machine a couple of times here. I'm just using some Nina Solar White heavyweight cardstock. And you can see, even though this die is designed for a slimline length card, I the cardstock that I'm cutting is not nearly as long. And that's totally fine to use these dies on smaller sized paper or to trim them down to make them fit for the project that you're working on. Now I'm taking my first stripe here or strip and I am protecting my surface with an easy clean craft mat. And I am taking my ballet slipper ink pad and just running it over the surface of this strip to add color. Now, when you do this direct to paper technique, you may notice that your ink looks a little splotchy on this white cardstock. There might be some areas that don't look completely filled in or as solid as the rest of the areas, but that's okay because this ink is going to absorb into the paper and it's gonna dry back and smooth out. So you don't have to make sure that every little inch is covered perfectly. Now between the colors, I'm cleaning up my mat just with a dry cloth to make sure that I'm not transferring the other inks onto my strips or onto my ink pad because I don't want to contaminate my ink pads. So I'm just keeping everything clean in between. And you're going to notice that on this strip in particular, it's not perfect when I lay down the ink. And in fact, I kind of flipped this over face down onto the ink that was on my mat and ran it through again. But the inking still was not perfect. But on the finished project, it looks great. Now I'm finishing off my strips with the Tidal Pond and this green is absolutely beautiful. It looks fabulous with these pinks. And even though the Ballet Slipper and the Coral Reef are not in the same Pink Fresh color family or um, quad family, they look great together as well. Now it was at this point I decided I might want a little gold in this color palette. So I took the Slim Stripes die again, this time two of them, and I took the one that cuts the skinniest strips and the medium sized strips and I ran that through my die cut machine with some gold cardstock just to have those on hand. As I build up my card design, I knew that there was a good possibility I would use one or both of these sizes of strips. Now, while I have my die cut machine out, I'm gonna go ahead and use the leafy branch die. And I also have this kind of label frame die that from Pink Fresh Studio as well. I didn't end up using this on the final card project because it was taking away from the stripe design too much. And you're watching me do the really lazy thing to get the die cut out of your die and that's just to slam it on your work surface. <laughs> I actually do that quite often and my daughter walked in when I was doing it and she was like, whoa, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just being lazy. <laughs> I said the die cut comes out perfectly when you do this and she's like, oh yeah, it did. So anyway, if you want to be lazy like me, you can just slam that die onto your work surface and the die cut pops right out. Now I have all of these stripes 
face down on my work surface. And once again, I brought in that easy clean mat and I'm adding tape runner adhesive to the back side of all of these stripes at once. And then I'm going to start layering them onto my card front. Now this card front is made from Nina Solar White heavyweight cardstock and I die cut it using the essential stitched rectangle die from Pink Fresh Studio. It's the larger of the pair that comes in that set. And I have a sentiment there and you'll see that it's already die cut and stacked up. I actually created those when I was getting back to creating after I was sick. I was down for the month of December with COVID and I'm totally fine. So don't worry about me. I'm doing great back to my normal self. But when I went back to try to create again, I was like kind of hitting a roadblock. And so what I did was I die cut a bunch of these classic word dies from Pink Fresh Studio out of some white cardstock. I layered them up and added a vellum shadow piece to them. That was just a way for me to get my creative wheels kind of flowing again without creating a project when I was trying to get my mojo back. <laughs> so if you're kind of stuck, that's always a good exercise in just die cutting and putting some hands on the paper and getting your creative juices flowing again. Now you'll notice that I went ahead and placed all of my stripes onto my card panel and I'm placing a scrap piece of cardstock next to that and I'm going to cut between the two pieces of cardstock and that's going to allow me to have those ends that are hanging off already adhered down onto a panel of cardstock and then I can trim them up later to use them on a different card project. Now I'm taking the leafy branch die, I'm adding a little bit of liquid adhesive there to the center part of that vine, and I'm layering it over this stripe pattern that I've created. And then I'm gonna take another one of those leafy branch die cuts. I've die cut it from some vellum, and I am placing that on top of the white die cut that I placed down earlier. So they're kind of layered up, creates a nice little shadow, and then I'm doing a little fluffing of these dies, or zhuzhing as Laura Basson likes to call it. And I started looking at this, and I liked this kind of arrangement here, but it was missing something. And I took this card front, and I decided I needed some textured cardstock rather than this plain Nina Solar White. So I'm just taking my scissors and kind of doing a little undercut on this design that I've already put together. I'm being careful not to cut through my little leafy branch dies that are already adhered to that stripe pattern, but I'm just cutting around these stripes that I've laid down onto this Nina Solar White. And that left me with my stripe pattern all intact, but now I can put it onto another card front. So I die cut some linen cardstock here. I used the Essential Stitched Rectangle Die again. And then I decided to bring in the Floral Cluster from the Keep Going stamp set. This is an absolutely beautiful stamp set. I love it. And I can't believe I haven't used it before. And I'm going to stamp that Floral Cluster onto this textured white cardstock. This is just giving this card a little more oomph. I felt like it needed something and I wasn't sure. And when I completed this with the linen cardstock and the stamped floral cluster, it was exactly what this card needed in my opinion. Now I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Misty Coast ink to stamp this onto my card front. It is a really nice neutral light gray ink and it's perfect for just kind of creating this background shadow pattern because this card is not really about these florals. It's more about that striped pattern, the thank you die cut, but this is gonna add some background texture to make it a little more interesting and add to kind of that overall layering effect. But this time I'm just creating my layers with stamped images instead. So you can see I had to switch to my larger Misty there <laughs> to get that final floral cluster stamped there on the bottom corner. And I was like, yes, this is what I want. So I added some foam adhesive to the back side of this stripe pattern that I created earlier or the stripe grouping. And now I'm using the edge of my Misty to help me line that up with the edge of my card front. So I'm just butting it up against that edge there to create kind of this, you know, straight line. <laughs> 
And then I'm going to add some glue to the back of my stacked up sentiment and place that right along the bottom of the stripe pattern, kind of hanging off. I didn't want to put it directly over the top of it because I didn't want to take away from all of those beautiful colors. Now I'm gonna add some dimension to this card front and I am using some fun foam that is covered in five inch score tape. This is a tip I got from my friend Leah Lawson. She takes and makes these fun foam panels with this five inch score tape so it covers the entire surface of this panel and has them ready to go to place on the back of her card fronts in her stash. And I thought that's a fabulous idea. <laughs> So I went ahead and made some for myself, but you must be sure that you are placing these in the correct spot because they stick and they stick fast. So just make sure you're really sure handed about where you want to place your pa panel when you have these on the back. Now to finish off the card and add a little bit of sparkle, I'm adding some of the clear Pink Fresh Studio Essential Crystals and that completes my card for today. It feels in a way very tropical, almost very Miami Vice, Florida kind of to me. I don't know. What does it feel like to you? Does it feel like spring? Does it feel like Florida or Hawaii or something completely different? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure to check there. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this project. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our paper crafting and card making tutorials here. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time. I hope you have a fabulous day.